Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials, and today's elements will be iridium and platinum, which are found in spark plugs. Although not all spark plugs will contain these precious metals, higher quality spark plugs will use a bit of platinum and iridium in the tip where the spark is generated, as they have a longer lifespan due to the high melting points and inertness of both platinum and iridium. I have been collecting old spark plugs from my local mechanic now for a few months, so today we will process them to separate and isolate the platinum and iridium. First, we can separate spark plugs with precious metals from spark plugs without precious metals. The spark plugs, which are very blunted at the end as seen here, contain no precious metals and can be discarded. Some of the spark plugs will actually be labeled iridium and platinum, so those can easily be identified. And then some will not be labeled, but they will have a pointy tip which contains platinum and iridium. Once they have been separated into piles, we can chop off the precious metals. The pointy tip has platinum or iridium as mentioned previously, and then the top piece of steel also has a small platinum or iridium disc. Both of these pieces can be chopped off of each spark plug and placed in a small container. After cutting the pieces off, we have a few bits with iridium, a few bits with platinum, and a few bits containing both iridium and platinum. With these pieces separated, we need to remove the steel by dissolving it in hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid can be easily purchased from hardware stores as muriatic acid. The spark plug pieces were added to three beakers with hydrochloric acid and heated on a hot plate to speed up the dissolution. After fully dissolving overnight, the iridium and platinum pieces remained and were filtered off. I decided to combine all the pieces and refine everything together, so all the precious metal pieces are in this container. When shaking the container, the high density of platinum and iridium is definitely noticeable. To separate the platinum from the iridium, we will place the precious metals in aqua regia, which is a mixture of nitric and hydrochloric acid. Aqua Regia will dissolve the platinum, but will not dissolve the iridium, so we'll be able to separate the two. In a previous video, I demonstrate how to prepare nitric acid from household materials, and as mentioned above, hydrochloric acid can be purchased as muriatic acid from hardware stores. This Aqua Regia mixture consists of half 32% hydrochloric acid and half 98% fuming nitric acid. 68% azeotropic nitric acid should work fine as well if you do not have fuming nitric acid. Heating the aqua regia mixture will help speed up the platinum dissolution, as the dissolution occurs quite slowly at room temperature. As the platinum reacts with the aqua regia, hexachloroplatinic acid is formed, which is a deep orangish-red color in solution. Even at elevated temperature, the platinum dissolution occurs rather slowly, so it took several days to complete the dissolution. Once no more bubbles were observed coming off the precious metal pieces, all the platinum had finished dissolving, so it was filtered and rinsed to remove the iridium. After filtering, a nice clear solution of hexachloroplatinic acid was obtained, and the filter paper contained the iridium pieces. The iridium was set aside while the platinum was further processed. With gentle warming, the hexachloroplatinic acid solution was evaporated to dryness over a few days to remove excess acid. The solution must not be boiled to dryness, as the hexachloroplatinic acid will decompose to platinum for a chloride, which is undesirable. After removing excess aqua regia, the hexachloroplatinic acid was re-dissolved in about 10 milliliters of water in a test tube, and a solution of 3 grams of ammonium chloride in 10 milliliters of water was prepared. You can see how to produce ammonium chloride in one of my previous videos. Adding the ammonium chloride solution to the hexachloroplatinic acid precipitates out insoluble ammonium hexachloroplatinate. After stirring the solution and leaving it to sit, the ammonium hexachloroplatinate settled to the bottom of the test tube. The yellow color of the solution is due to a small amount of ammonium hexachloroplatinate dissolving the above liquid. In concentrated ammonium chloride solutions, ammonium hexachloroplatinate has a low solubility of 0.0028 grams per 100 milliliters due to the common ion effect, however it is much more soluble in plain water, so having an excess of ammonium chloride is essential. Once settled, the ammonium hexachloroplatinate was filtered and rinsed twice with 5 milliliters of saturated ammonium chloride solution. It was then left to dry completely and transferred into a test tube. The test tube was placed in a butane flame to decompose the ammonium hexachloroplatinate completely. As the ammonium hexachloroplatinate decomposes, platinum metal is produced and ammonium chloride, hydrogen chloride, and nitrogen gas escape. Hydrogen chloride is toxic and corrosive, so the decomposition must be performed in a fume hood or outside. After fully decomposing, the platinum powder was scraped out onto a piece of paper. Powdered platinum is actually very useful for chemistry, as it is often used as a catalyst where a high surface area is essential. Also, if other platinum compounds are being synthesized, it is much, much faster to dissolve powdered platinum in aqua regia compared to a solid platinum chunk. Additionally, platinum has a very high melting point of 1772 degrees Celsius, so a very hot flame is necessary to melt it, so leaving it as this powder is easier. 
I placed both the iridium and platinum in pre-weighed ampules for my element collection and obtained a total of 0.18 grams of iridium and 0.27 grams of platinum. These amounts of precious metals are worth about $50 based on the current iridium and platinum prices, which is kind of insane considering what a small quantity of material there is. Iridium is also super cool, as it is the second densest element just behind osmium. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a future project. Okay, bye.